I'm Roger Mudd. Welcome to jury service. Most of us call it jury duty, but it really is a service, not only to our state and to our courts, but also to each other. Trial by jury, being judged by our neighbors, by our peers, that is, by our equals, is at the very heart of American justice. For the American citizen, there is no finer contribution to our democratic society than serving as a juror. This videotape is designed to help you understand the jury system in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I'm Judge Moore, and it's my pleasure to be able to come out here this morning and welcome you on this, the first day of your term as a member of our jury. Courtrooms across Virginia may be very different, but jury service is similar throughout the state. Jurors play an essential role in the trial of a case. Although many people do not know what to expect from jury service, most look back upon it as a rewarding experience. Most of you want to know how you were selected. You were chosen randomly, either by computer or by hand, under the supervision of jury commissioners who are citizens appointed by circuit judges. This random selection is designed to obtain a cross-section of the community, men and women of different ages, races, and occupations. To be eligible for jury service in Virginia, you must be a citizen of the United States, a resident of Virginia for at least one year, and a resident for six months of the city or county where you were summoned for jury duty. And you must be over 18 years old. Those of you over 70 may serve if you want to, but you may be excused upon request. Formal education is not required to serve on a jury, only sound judgment, integrity, and impartiality. You may not serve if you have ever been convicted of a felony, if you are a party in a case to be tried during the term of the court, or if you have served on a jury within the last two years. You may be worried about the effect of jury duty on your job. Virginia law specifically states that employers cannot fire you or take personnel action against you because of jury service. If any of you feel that you are exempt or disqualified from jury service uh, or would like to request a deferral to another term of court, then I will be available to hear those requests. The judge may excuse you for a particular day. A physical ailment may be considered a reasonable excuse, but a busy schedule may not be. If you need to have your service postponed until a later term of the court, you may request a deferral from the judge. Most jury cases in Virginia are completed in a day or two. If the trial lasts longer than a day, you will be allowed to go home, except in unusual circumstances. On occasion, you may be called but still not serve. Cases are frequently settled as late as the morning of the trial. The simple fact that a jury is about to be selected helps the parties reconsider their positions and settle. Whether you serve on a jury or not, you will be reimbursed at the current rate of $20 for each day of attendance. You will be given a lunch break and may be given other breaks during the course of the trial. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your being with us today, and the case that we're going to try today is a civil case. Jurors actually selected to serve on a jury will hear either a criminal or a civil case. Civil cases are controversies essentially private in nature between two or more parties. They involve matters generally dealing with money. Civil cases are usually heard by juries of either five or seven members, depending on the amount of money involved. City of Virginia Beach versus Donald B. Jr. In criminal cases, the action is brought in the name of the government to try persons accused of violating the criminal laws of the state, its cities, towns, or counties. Criminal cases are divided into felonies and misdemeanors. A felony is a crime punishable by death or by confinement of at least a year. All other crimes are misdemeanors. Felonies are tried by 12-member juries. Misdemeanors are tried by seven-member juries. Everyone please rise. The Circuit Court of Fairfax County is now in session. Now will Richard J. and work you presiding. Please be seated. A judge presides over the trial and rules on all questions of law and procedure. The judge controls the trial's progress and instructs the jury. A court reporter or electronic device keeps a word-for-word -word record of most trial proceedings. The bailiff, a law enforcement officer, maintains the security of court proceedings. 
Please raise the court your clerk hands. assists the Please judge, keeps court files, and preserves the evidence during a trial. A Attorneys generally represent the parties in a dispute. In a civil suit, the attorney for the complaining party, the plaintiff, asks questions, presents evidence, and argues on behalf of those who filed the suit. In a criminal case, the prosecutor presents the government's case. In both civil and criminal cases, a defense attorney usually represents the defendant against whom the allegations have been made. Rhea Sprouse. Trials begin with the selection of the jurors. Names are randomly selected from those of you on jury duty to form a panel from which the trial jury will be selected. The bailiff or clerk then escorts the panel into the courtroom. The plaintiff in this case alleges that on or about November the 28th, 1987, on Kings Highway here in the county, that she was proceeding uphill uh, in an early snowstorm. It was about 5 p.m. And she alleges that the defendant was negligently driving her vehicle coming down the hill. And that as a result of the defendant's negligence, the defendant's vehicle went into a slide and hit her. And she says that as a result of this, she suffered uh, pain and suffering, that she had damages to her car, and she had medical expenses, and she's suing today for those damages. Did any of you ladies and gentlemen read or hear anything about this case from any source other than what I just got through telling you? Are you sensible of any bias or prejudice that you might have in this matter? Do you know this process, known as voir dire, means literally to speak the truth. The judge may excuse those on the panel whose knowledge of the people or circumstance would affect their impartiality. Attorneys for both sides may also examine jurors. Okay, Mr. Dowdy, you may inquire. First of all, have any of you jurors been involved in an automobile accident where injuries have resulted? Two types of challenges may lead a juror to be excused. One, for cause, requires the judge to excuse anyone who cannot be impartial. The other allows each side a limited number of peremptory challenges without giving the judge any reason. Being excused in no way reflects on your competence, character, or qualifications. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear that you will well and truly try the issue joined in this case and bring in a verdict in accordance with the law and the evidence and the instruction of the court so help you God? After taking the oath, you will be instructed by the judge about the rules of the case. With the judge's permission, you may ask questions of the witness or ask to have evidence repeated. You must decide the case solely on the basis of the evidence presented to all the jurors during the trial. It's your duty to determine the facts and to determine them from the evidence and the reasonable inferences arising from the evidence. And in so doing, you must not indulge in guesswork or speculation. It's improper for you as jurors to investigate the facts on your own by talking to any of the participants, by conducting your own research, or by going to the scene of the dispute or the crime. If the judge feels a visit to the scene is proper, all the jurors will be escorted there together. It's essential that jurors keep an open mind until all the evidence has been presented. During the trial, you must not discuss the case with your family or friends. You may not read any newspaper accounts of the trial, nor watch television coverage. You must not discuss the case with your fellow jurors until the judge instructs you to begin deliberations. After the trial is over, you are free to discuss the case with anyone, but you are under no obligation to do so. Mr. Dowdy, would you like to make an opening statement? After the jury has been selected, the attorney for the plaintiff, if it's a civil case, or the prosecutor, if it's a criminal case, makes an opening statement. Next, the defense attorney makes an opening statement. Both are meant to introduce you to the case and to outline the arguments and the evidence to be presented. These statements are not evidence. So who is your first witness, Mr. Downey? Presenting the evidence comes next, and the plaintiff or government goes first. Evidence may be physical objects such as documents, charts, goods, or weapons or it may be the testimony of witnesses answering questions from attorneys. Would you please state your name and your profession? My name is Dr. Mark Leitner. I'm a physician. Witnesses may also be questioned or cross-examined by the opposing attorney 
then re-examined by the attorney who called them. Dr. Leitner, it is fairly evident you were just recently out of uh, your uh, residency and, and your final uh, work in uh, your advanced studies in neurosurgery. Isn't that true? Uh, actually, I'm 38 years old and I've been practicing for a six-year period. The primary role of the jury is to determine the facts based on an evaluation of all the evidence that the judge rules admissible. If the judge rules certain evidence inadmissible, jurors must exclude it from their consideration. Bailiff, would you please take these jurors and take them into the jury room? Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll excuse us just for a moment, we're going to take up some matters and we'll be with you as quickly as we can. Thank you. At various times during the course of most trials, the judge will call attorneys to the bench for a private conversation or ask jurors to leave the courtroom. The judge and attorneys frequently will discuss points of law applicable to the case or the admissibility of certain evidence out of the jury's hearing so that jurors will consider only matters they should in reaching a verdict. Mrs. Densmore had ample opportunity to either turn around or pull into a parking area. Isn't that true? Objection, Your Honor. She's leading the witness. Would counsel approach the bench, please? Occasionally, attorneys may object to the introduction of evidence because they want only appropriate evidence to be considered by the jury. Jurors should not allow this to prejudice their opinions. Is there any other evidence or testimony? No, sir, I have no further evidence. After each side has presented all its evidence, the judge will instruct you on the law in the case. The fact that there was an accident and that the plaintiff was injured does not of itself entitle the plaintiff to recover since the plaintiff has the burden of proving by the greater weight of the evidence the defendant's negligence and that the negligence caused the injuries. You must follow the law as stated by the judge, even though you may have a different idea about what the law is or ought to be. Before you retire to deliberate, the attorneys will tell you what they think the evidence proves and why their client should win. I would submit and argue to you today that Mrs. Densmore contributed to her accident. These closing arguments may help you recall many details of the case, but they are not evidence. Right. Mr. Dowdy, now we'd like for you to retire, deliberate, and arrive at your verdict. You will then be taken to the jury room. Your first task will be to choose a leader to preside over your deliberation. The leader makes certain your discussion is free and orderly so that all of you will have a chance to be heard. I don't think I would have moved at all. In the conditions, they said the snow was sticking on the grass, not on the road. You may refer to a written version of the judge's instructions, and you may request additional explanations if they're required. You must first decide what the facts are, then draw reasonable conclusions based on sound reasoning in accordance with the law. You must make your own decisions without sacrificing conscientious beliefs. This jury went out at 2.13, and the bailiff advises me they've reached a verdict at 4.15. Let's ask the jurors to come back in, please. A true verdict is one that each member of the jury believes to be true, based on the evidence in the case, and not influenced by bias, prejudice, fear, or favor. In both civil and criminal cases, the jury's verdict must be unanimous. We, the jury, on the issue joined in the case of Prudence Densmore Plaintiff versus Beverly Winkler Defendant, find our verdict in favor. In a civil case, when the jury finds for the plaintiff, it also decides on the damage award. In a criminal case, when the jury finds the accused guilty, it also sets the punishment except in capital cases where a separate proceeding before the same jury is held on the issue of punishment. Are there any motions while the jury is still present? Very well, you're free to leave. We appreciate your work today. We'll see you next time if you're scheduled. Thank you. Your decisions as jurors can affect the human rights, the civil rights, the property rights, even the right to life of your neighbors and your fellow citizens. The Commonwealth has called on you and is now counting on you to apply your sense of equity and your common sense as laymen to the formal rules of law. By answering the call, you are keeping alive and healthy an 800-year-old legal institution that has become uniquely American. Jury service is a tangible, challenging, and indispensable contribution to our country.